This is Cam Kelly. Welcome to yet another Devil Talk, where the only person in Devil Talk history who has had a two-parter is owner and CEO Paul Reagan. But someone's come back for more. It's the Mighty Max Boom Boom Beer Brayer. Always ready to come back. Do you know what, though? We, we've got to, you know, I mean, if you're coming in for a two-parter, you know, you've got, to, you've got to come armed with some stuff that, you know, is going to blow our mind. The pressure is high. The, the, pressure, the is pressure is high, but I'm pretty sure the, re- the only reason the pressure is high is because you've got a lot of information stacked up in your head from ladies' night, and the pressure is, are you going to say something that you probably shouldn't? I would think so. Okay. This, let's just quickly um, try and round it up. This year's ladies' night, compared to last year's ladies' night, the big differences? The big difference is um, I think we decided to clean it up and make it a little bit more classier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, just sometimes you get bad publicity from it. Uh, people get a little bit too drunk and do weird things that they shouldn't have done. Um, like two nights ago now. Uh, yeah. You know, people falling on a dance floor and uh, tripping over chairs is not... Uh, not exactly a great night. So this time, they just um, I think Nina um, decided to clean it up a little bit. She was in charge of it. Yeah. And it turned out to be actually a great night. Um, ladies enjoy themselves. We enjoy themselves. Um, Is there any kind of juicy gossip that you can tell us without naming and shaming anyone? Can uh, you can you say player A got with Mrs B and potentially in nine months there could be a baby C. No, no, there no. is options F and K and all sorts of options, but mm-hmm. no, nothing really like that doesn't really happen. Uh, well, it happens sometimes. I think only with the single guys, though. I mean, they they allowed to have a free reign to do anything and uh, have a great time. But there was people falling on the floor that had a little too many drinks, so we couldn't clean that up. But I think you were saying earlier it was very much like Strictly Come Dancing, but possibly the worst version in the world ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The player A, the player A tripped on a chair and face planted on the, on the dance floor, yeah. Uh, right, so um, without going into too much detail, you can't tell us too much, but uh, suffice to say, there may have been a little bit of gossip, nothing too scandalous. Other than that, compared to last year, it was very civilised this year. No, it's very civilized. It's reminded me a bit of a polo. All right. You know, it's like glorified polo day. But mm-hmm. I, I like it better because of the polo day. Yeah. Because of the odds, obviously, there's over 200 women and mm-hmm. there's a 20 of us. So, like, I think, I believe, I didn't finish high school, but I think that's 10 to 1. I th- it works out around that, yeah. So, if you're a betting man, that's good odds to lay your money on. And all of those 200 have come to see all of you 20. But, again, half the guys are single. So, really, it's 200 to 10. So are we, are we narrowing the odds now down to 20 to per person? Yeah, so the odds yeah. are going up and up. <laughs> so essentially, if you were an ice hockey player for the Cardiff Devils and you were feeling a little bit lonely, that's probably the night that you don't want to get food poisoning. That's kind of the night that you want to be there, isn't it? That's exactly mm. right. You probably don't even eat. But uh, the problem here, obviously, now is that uh, <laughs> it's another year away. It's, a, it's, it's like enough. Christmas, isn't it? Is it like no, Christmas for the Cardiff Devils? Is it? Because I spend... It's an early Christmas. It is an early, early Christmas. Christmas. Now you've got to wait a year for that. But then maybe if we get good reviews from uh, our owner, yeah. Paul Reagan, perhaps we have a part two of part two. Part two of part two. Right. I, um, yeah, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, but if the girls enjoyed themselves and if they can uh, organize and sell tickets for another ladies' night, I don't see why not. If you have a great blockbuster movie coming out, there's always parts two, three, and four. That's right. And, and you have to capitalize. As a good owner, I think you should capitalize. So if uh, Paul is listening to this, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. that's what I'm trying to do. That's trying what to you butter him up a little bit. Lobbying for ladies' night part two. Yeah. This time it's personal. Yes. A sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Prove a point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I like it. And I like the fact that you've compared a ladies' night to a blockbuster movie. That's- <laughs> That's great. I love that. We can rate it and everything. And uh, we'll probably um, maybe give out awards for greatest performance uh, later on in the year. All right. So let's have a look. So that's the uh, that's the ladies' night. Um, well and truly out of the way for at least six months. Fingers crossed. Touch wood, right? Right. Okay. Uh, on to the games then. Um, right. Sheffield last Sunday. Dundee last Saturday at home. I, it was a good weekend for us, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, we had a lot of pressure on Saturday. Mm-hmm. To come back and uh, get two points because of perform the performance as of late before that, yeah, and it was good. I mean, seven three, seven goals. Yeah, we yeah. needed to get some guys on a roll and start scoring, including myself. Um, mm-hmm. So it was happy to um, to score a couple of goals and get that monkey off the back. Yeah, um, and then we go. We went to um, Sheffield the next day, mm-hmm. and again thought we played really well. It's just. Again, a couple of maybe penalties. So there was a lot of goals scored in the power play. A um, couple of breakdowns that cost us. But all in all, we really 
we all agreed that we should have came out with at least one point from that game, right. which is encouraging to see. So, but as long as you see guys working hard, and um, you know the play in the neutral zone improved and, and scoring improved, that's what you want to see. You know that you go in right places. So there's a definite difference then between uh, leaving a game which you've lost, but you know that you've all played out your socks to leaving a game that you've lost, and exactly. you just know that you've yeah, so, not not yeah, given it everything. The sport is like that sometimes you felt like you should have won and you lost. And mm-hmm. the, it is a little bit about luck, mostly about playing well. So that's why when you play well, you know that luck's going to be more on your side than other teams in the future. Right. Which uh, Does that mean that uh, you can take the confidence from both weekend matches into this weekend matches? Well, absolutely. I think the confidence is probably one of the biggest things um, for a pro- professional athlete or for the team and all. Will you also be taking, because I know uh, at home this weekend, it's Saturday night's Coventry, and then that's that's a nightmare of a journey um, to Dundee on the Sunday. Um, on that journey, you'll obviously be taking some confidence with you. Uh, will you be taking grudges with you? Because on Saturday against Dundee, it was, I think two or three outbreaks, and one particularly bad one with G. Well, has G got unfinished business? There was another business? thing that was also nice to see. You know, mm. you guys uh, stood up for each other. Uh, jumped in when uh, when needed, and it was great to see. G had a great fight with um, I think Turner it was was his name, and I think he got contagious a little bit. Um, and the end of the game, you know, he this Turner guy was just you know after our little guys and slashing and playing a bit of a dirty game. So Walter in the end of the game went and um, did what had to be did, done. Did what had to be done. So it doesn't to make sure that doesn't happen in the future. And that's part of the game. If you you know you got to pay for what you do. Does that mean when you go to Dundee, you'll be looking out particularly for Turner? Or do you think he's learned your lesson? Or do you go up there with the mentality, we've got unfinished business with um, this guy? Well, we're going to go there with full confidence. But I think Turner is going to be looking for more of the... Yeah? <laughs> for, uh, you know, uh, looking over his shoulder probably Good. once or twice before he gets the puck. Isn't it, isn't it weird, like various sports that you go to? Um, my youngest sister came to the hockey for the first time on Saturday night and, uh, and all she kept asking me, and it's one of those things that you usually try and steer your youngest away from violence in any way, shape or form. But you're like, it's all right, love, don't worry, there'll be a fight soon, come on. Well, you yeah, just hang in there. Yeah. No, that's what, uh, well, most of the people come in to see and you want to see all the elements of the game. That's mm-hmm. the beauty about hockey is that there's all, everything involved. There's skill, there's speed, there's toughness, there's, there's everything. And there's goals. Sometimes. Yeah. So I, people seem to not to care about goals nowadays. I think they were. I think no. I think uh, I think they cared about the goals on Saturday night. Seven of them, and they're all absolute corkers as well. Right. So we've spoken about Sunday, um, but Saturday at home to Coventry in the Bay. Is there going to be? Are there going to be any Coventry players looking over their shoulders? Are there anyone that you're looking out for there? And um, what kind of performance do you expect? I think the way we've been playing, everybody should be looking out over their shoulders, and particularly that game. I think the two teams right now that. It's kind of under, well, if you can say that, underachieved the first part of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're in a bit of a role right now. They won a couple of big games. Yeah. So they'll be coming in and looking to um, rejuvenating their season. And we playing well. Yeah. Trying to get, you know, close to the top of the table. So it will kind of look at the teams are both in the same situation. I really think it's going to be a big game um, and a big turnaround for either or, you know, whoever wins probably <laughs> Hopefully the luck is on our side. Well, that's Saturday night, and um, and like you say, it's going to be a big game with um, with a big competitor. Because, uh, in all fairness, the Dundee game it was like a packed house, and you wouldn't expect that on a Dundee game. But that was a, that was a great atmosphere. Well, yeah, but, I mean, our, it's a you know credit due to the our office. Mm. Um, they try a couple of different marketing techniques, and uh, kind of paid off. It kind of paid off, and there was a full house. Uh, from our perspective of you, from players, mm-hmm. it's always nicer to play in front of packed arena. Um, yeah, give you a little bit extra jump and excitement. I know that G has increased your training regime. Do you think that's helped much? We train every day except for Monday with take off, but sometimes we also take Wednesdays off because of some of the school guys can't make it. Right. So we go, we double up on Tuesday uh-huh. with a gym session, and then we take Wednesday off. So we decided to go with maybe lighter gym a little bit, mm-hmm. but skate on Wednesday as well. Supposed to taking that Wednesday off, and we took a couple a couple of those Wednesdays and it worked out a little bit better. But um, as the season go on, we're probably gonna ease up a little bit more because there's so many games and the schedule is so tight that sometimes it's good to take that Wednesday off. But in your opinion as a player, has it made a noticeable difference that not taking the Wednesday off, putting that extra work in? Well, we needed it. We needed yep. to change something, mm-hmm. and that's what we changed. And it obviously worked. Yep. I don't know if that's specifically because of that that happened. But 
the main thing is that we got there, yeah. where we are, and we want to stay there. Okay. Um, who should we be uh, looking out for, I think, like to really make a mark within the next few weeks that you think, from certainly a training point of view, they're really coming into their own now? Well, number one, I got to get myself going a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I'm just catching after, you know, being hurt and being out for six or seven games. Mm -hmm. um, just finding my feet now, finally, and feeling also confident. Yeah. Um, Matt's could probably, because, you know, everybody expects great things from yeah. him. And, I, and sometimes you go on the quiet for for a week or two but then when it bursts when it rains and pours yeah and i know when uh scott probably the next game i'm, I'm assuming when it's kind of you know he's gonna score two three and then it's gonna turn into five and ten goals yeah so i don't think we should worry about it and and that's what who i'm looking for to, to take us to the next level scott is gonna really pick it up which would probably happen in the next couple of days and you have returned from injury so what we've been on the ice for what about three weeks a month um and there is a noticeable difference and i've only just put my finger on it uh, between you the last time you're in and you now you seem a lot more relaxed because i remember you were so desperate to get back on the ice weren't oh, you yeah. to heal up I mean, properly and get on the ice and make that difference on your nerves you know like like again like i was saying like you're starting to squeeze that stick a little bit harder it's got nothing to do with as, as a play you don't just you know don't play but when you get over it and you get a couple of one or one or two goals mm -hmm. um it feels like a monkey after your back yeah and uh you're actually back on this and you can do something but you can't do much from the stands no you need a long stick to score from the stand yes you do <laughs> they haven't invented one yet yeah. oh can you imagine um the kind of interference from play if they did yeah. uh max boom boom beer briar thank you so much for joining us again on devil talk uh good luck at home to coventry on saturday and away to dundee on sunday thank you very much